welcome to the final episode of The Shaggy Chef. Not the final episode of Chai Time, but this wonderful, beautiful thing that I've cultivated for three months is getting chopped on Monday. So the next time you see me, I'll be a less Shaggy Chef, more coiffed, more put together. <laughs> but to celebrate, to celebrate the final episode of The Shaggy Chef, I've done two things. One, I've decided to wear a white shirt when I'm going to cook frying um, Chicken 65. <laughs> Lovely. And Chai Pani Mom at the helm there. Hi, everybody. To that. <laughs> and number two, I'm going to celebrate with a long pot of chai. Do you see how the Shaggy Chef actually has shadow on his face because of, of the, because of the okay, fro? Watch the long pour. Watch the long pour. Oh, look at it. Look at it. And then you come back down in for that final. Mmm. All right. That's a straight up street style chai with the long pour. And why the long pour? Well, take a look. Nice and frothy. Oh. Ah, that's oh. A, you know, so that's a beautiful cup of chai. Thank you, Chai Pani Mom. I got my Creative Mornings cup with me today. Ah, oh, mmm, mmm, everyday fluffy. It's fluffy chai. I love it. <laughs> fluffy, All right, guys. fluffy chai. Mm, really excited about today's episode. Chicken 65. This thing is legendary amongst Indian menus of a certain type of establishment, usually tabas, North Indian restaurants, Chinese restaurants. I mean, every menu in India, they've got one of those sort of pan-Asian menus where you've got like five pages of recipes, I mean, of uh, menu items, ranging from Taba style to North Indian style to Punjabi style to South Indian food to Chinese to continental. There's always going to be Chicken 65. And what is Chicken 65? Well, it's basically little fried chicken nuggets, I mean, fried chicken, you know, strips, but what gives it a distinctive uh, look is the bright red color of that Chicken 65. And that color is accomplished by probably red dye number, you know, five. So I'm not gonna put any red dye in our Chicken 65 today. We're gonna cook Chicken 65 in a really clean, classic way. And the ingredients in the mix of Chicken 65, this particular recipe is an homage to my dear friend, an extremely talented chef, in fact, one of the best Indian chefs I know, Daniel Peach, our chef de cuisine and our culinary director for the Chai Pani Restaurant Group. And uh, we made this at a dinner at Jack Rabbit Philly, and I swear to God, it was cracked chicken. So today is cracked chicken 65. <laughs> Come anyway. Okay, so I would argue that the single most important ingredient in chicken 65 is chicken. But not just any chicken. The chicken thigh meat is the best meat for any kind of um, fried chicken, crispy deliciousness. Uh, it's juicy, it's moist, it's the dark meat, it doesn't dry like breast meat. So if you can get boneless, skinless chicken thigh meat, that's the best kind of meat for any kind of fried chicken. Uh, if you can't, chicken breast works perfectly fine too. What are you Sorry. laughing at? <laughs> Sorry, Vish is distracting me. Vish would like us to know that he is here in the house, but he protests. He I'm is. not sure what he's protesting. <laughs> He is protesting that we haven't done a Maggie Noodle episode yet. Ah, uh, yeah, he said it's and not Maggie. Which, That's I what he meant. I promise okay. the Maggie Noodle episode is coming. You have no hard how, you have no idea how difficult <laughs> it is to find anything Maggie. In I fact, know. I went to the store today and the Maggie sweet chili sauce sold out at Fresh Market. Who the hell is buying Maggie sweet chili sauce at Fresh Market? But I will do a Maggie. I just got to track down the Maggie Noodles. Daniel, if you're on the show, please let's Send get us some Maggie, some Maggie noodles from Atlanta. Okay, guys, let's get right into this. So um, this is a, a riff off of uh, the recipe that Danny and I made at Jack Rabbit Philly. Uh, obviously, chicken thighs. I've cut them up into. Um, let's use a. Let's use a. Uh, let's put a glove on. Why not? Let's put the glove on. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let me get. Somebody's suggesting now. you can find Maggie on Amazon. Ah yes, I'm sure you can, but it just doesn't beat, beat the delights of going to an Indian store and wandering around for hours looking for a dusty bottle on a shelf buried somewhere. <laughs> No, it's true. Through. Who I knows how through. long they live there? I will look for it. Well, I'm thank sorry. you, Vish. I'm okay. honored. So the chicken strips have been cut into thin strips, right? Why? Because we want these to fry quickly without drying out. And um, and so I took the thigh and just cut them into long, thin strips like that. Okay. So let's talk about spices. Very, very simple. Um, let's go. Let's start in the simplest. About exactly and approximately one <laughs> heaping tablespoon, uh, or one heaping teaspoon of sugar. Exactly, approximately. And exactly and approximately one heaping teaspoon of um, uh, black pepper. That's and here. then, yeah, that's over there. Actually, I'd say it's more like, what the hell did I put in there? No, no, I'll take that back. That's a tablespoon of each. Okay. A heaping tablespoon of each. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Exactly and approximately. <laughs> a half a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Um, Look at just, that beautiful turmeric powder. 
And yeah, that's our diaspora turmeric powder from our dear friend Sana. And that's about a, a, teaspoon, a heaping tablespoon of Kashmir chili powder. Um, now, the red color from Chicken 65, I'm hoping is gonna come from this Kashmir chili powder. One of the distinctive features of Kashmir chili powder, besides the really um, almost citrusy flavor of the, of the chili pepper, is its color. So tandoori chicken, any kind of bright red chicken curry in India, and through the, probably even 60, six, Chicken 65, say that 10 times fast, should get its color from Kashmir chili powder, not from a red dye. It's not gonna be bright pink glow in the dark um, sort of, you know, fluorescent colored chicken 65, but it'll still have that hue we're looking for. I use the word hue in recipes. <laughs> Try that next time. And an optional ingredient, just a pinch of hing. Again, a half a teaspoon of hing. And hing is that wonderful resin. Uh, it's a uh, asafoetida uh, the, um, and dried into a powder, and it adds a wonderful funkiness and umami to dishes. I call it the fish sauce of Indian cuisine. But if you don't have it, no problem. It still tastes delicious. Fish says beet juice works. Uh, of for course, the red dye of effect. Course. And, and you know, I'm going to race over to my beet juice press right now <laughs> and get me some fresh beet juice. Wait. Actually, I really did think of that. Vish, I mean, honest, honest to God, on the way to the grocery store, I was thinking, like, how the hell do I get some beet juice? And then I was like, ah, uh, you know, not worth too it. Much too work. much work. Too much work. Why, why is Vish sending us pictures of bullocks? You'll have to explain that reference later, Vish. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's at kissmybutt1. If you guys want to go on Instagram and start hitting, Harass him. Harass at kissmybutt1. B-H-A-T-T. Butt1. <laughs> My good friend, Vish Butt. I'm so glad he's on the show today. Um, ginger garlic paste. You all have heard me talk about ginger garlic paste. I've used the word wax. I've used the word rhapsodic. I've used the word poetic. All the waxing has been done. <laughs> and essentially, it is peeled ginger and garlic fresh, equal amounts pureed together with maybe a drop of water to help it just, you know, puree nicely in a food processor. If you want to get crushed garlic and minced ginger and mix them together, that's fine too. I cheated together today. I got my minced garlic, uh, I mean minced ginger um, out of a jar from the grocery store and my garlic, I just use a garlic press to crush some garlic. I didn't want to sit there and buzz it all up and mess up uh, uh, the food processor for just this much. Um, some lime juice to add a little acidity. Again, optional. I like that little bit of acid. Um, the uh, flour and cornstarch. And why use cornstarch versus flour or flour versus cornstarch? Cornstarch is starchier than flour, than regular flour. And so cornstarch gives a really golden crispiness when you fry foods with it. However, it also can have a slightly raw taste of flour, and you got to really fry it well. I find the combination works well of regular flour, AP flour, and uh, cornstarch, and uh, usually about three to one is a good ratio. So I got about a quarter cup of regular all-purpose flour, and um, and maybe a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch in there. If you don't have cornstarch, you can use all-purpose flour. It's all it's all good. And about how much was the how much was the chicken? Like, oh, what, right, what, good wait. question. Chicken was four chicken pies. I would say about a pound and a half of chicken. Okay. And then the final ingredient is soy sauce. Soy sauce. Again, these dishes are invented and they, you know, basically blur across the menu and, 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 you know, borrow things from all the genres of that certain kind of restaurant that has eight genres of cuisine on the menu. And, and these things are created, made up and become legendary and like anything else, it's like the Philly cheesesteak. Who the hell made it first? Where did it come from? Who knows? It's delicious. It's fun. It's fantastic. And today with the rainy outside and the nice hot cup of chai. Mm -mm -mm. Hear that sir. <sighs> Yes. <laughs> we're going to have fun today. All right. Oh, and then the last thing that we're going to do is after we made the crispy chicken 65, we're going to hit it with a tarka, a flavored oil. That's actually where the flavor of the chicken 65 is really going to pop. And uh, what's it going to be in that flavor oil? Well, check it in, Mommy, if you want to take a look. Mm -hmm. In the tarka, we're going to put more black pepper. And we're going to have a real, you know, chicken 65 reminds me a little bit of like salt and pepper chicken, Asian salsa. And I, and I almost want to say it was probably salt and pepper chicken. Um, but done up with some, you know, a couple of extra Indian spices, and that's where that whole thing is. Indianified. From. So I'm going to put uh, black pepper, some whole coriander seeds in there. Um, and because I just want that slightly uh, citrusy, floral, grassy flavor in the oil, uh, a whole chili to flavor the oil, and curry leaves to flavor the oil. So we're going to make that separately. I'm also going to add some julienne fresh ginger and some, um, I mean, I found myself a nice looking jalapeno today. You can use the serrano, you can use green chili. We're gonna cut up some rings, fry it all in the oil, and then pour the oil over the chicken as it's done, and it'll be mwah. 
Okay. Vish has a good question. If yeah. somebody has a gluten allergy, would you use rice flour as the substitute? Um, or would you I, use yes. like a gluten-free I've used, flour? I, I've used, I'm not on this dish, but I've used rice flour before and I've used uh, cornstarch before. I would not use a gluten-free flour unless you've used it before and trust it and know that it's not going to burn or get weird or gummy or kind of fall So you'd say rice flour? I would say rice flour. Okay. Yeah, we've used rice flour quite often when frying uh, onions. You don't get quite the same crust on the outside. Um, as you would with the regular flour, but it'll still be crispy. The rice flour will still make it crispy. All right, guys, so I'm gonna put all my, this is very simple, easy peasy. Spices in. Come in, come in, baby, let's get in there. Ginger garlic paste in. How much ginger garlic paste? Oh, that's about almost a quarter cup of ginger garlic paste. That's gonna add a lot of the base flavor to this chicken. Let's just get that in there. Okay, let's give that all a little mix up together. Where did the 65 come from in Chicken 65? It's a really good question. Uh, if anybody has any theories online, I'd like to hear it. I mean, on, on the show right now, um, you know, it could be, um, it quite, all, quite often Indian menus are in, in restaurants are numbered, all the dishes. So you, you know, oh. like Chinese, Chinese <laughs> That's menus. That's so true. Number eight, yeah. number 10, number 16. Maybe it was number 65 on the, on the menu of this one particular place that made it. Who the heck knows? But uh, it's just one of these things. I bet the somebody stuff. watching knows. Yeah, well, or I mean, Vish is people, Googling for us. I'm sure Vish is Googling. Um, oh, let me put the soy in. And we're going to put probably close to a tablespoon of soy. We're going to give a healthy dash of soy. Yeah, there we go. Nice three or four blugs of soy. And get that flavor. And we're going to squeeze the lime juice in. This is also not something that we actually did traditionally, but I'm doing it because I want some liquid in there so that the flour kind of turns into a little bit of a slurry and coats it well. We're not dusting this with flour like, like a fried chicken, you know, we're actually mixing the flour in here. Just so a little bit of that lime juice. So you got the salt and the acid, and then let's put this bad boy in here. So we have two votes so far. One person's heard that it had 65 ingredients. Ah, Another well, person heard that it was from the year 1965. Well, we certainly don't have 65 ingredients today. <laughs> 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 Unless so it was 65 knows. pieces of chicken. Could, and, could um, be. And uh, we certainly don't have, um, um, what was it, the other one? Made in 65? Yeah, 1965. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. <laughs> I like it, I like it. <laughs> could be, could be true. Would it work to sub tamari sauce for the soy sauce? Yeah, or if you got, again, if you have a wheat allergy, absolutely. Yeah, you're just trying to get that, like, soy sauce umami in here. All right, guys. And I'm going to go ahead and drop my... Bits of chicken 65 in here. I feel like it actually needs a little bit more flour, but I don't want to get my. Don't want to make, you know, just look to see that it's nicely coated, almost like in a, almost like in a batter, you know. It's not quite a batter, and it's not quite dry, and it's not quite a dredge. It's somewhere in between. But oh, that's, that's. See, that's what you want to kind of look like. Okay, this uh, is the best one. It was approved by 65 aunties. <laughs> <laughs> that is a really good really one. Really good one, whoever okay. said that. As you guys can see, I got my thermometer in my oil. I'm using safflower oil. I've just got a pot of oil. I think I put about a liter of oil in a pot. I keep my thermometer in there so I can, I can manage and monitor the oil. It actually got a little hot. It's running at 400. But once I put the chicken in, it'll drop right down to 350, which is where you want to keep oil, 325, 350. So the first few pieces might fry a little fast. but And when you put pieces into oil, drop them away from you. That way they don't splash and splatter towards you. Hopefully not towards your camera person either. <laughs> oh yeah, remember last time with the mustard episode? That we had an episode last was time. probably officially our first cluster F episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really was. It really was a cluster F episode. Okay. I think your vote was rice flour over gluten-free panko, right? Several questions about gluten-free versions. Um, my, my vote is still rice flour, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, Just to confirm for those questions. I mean, again, not to say that it wouldn't work, but I, when I've experimented with frying, I've used rice flour and it works well. I've not used gluten-free gluten flours for frying. If you have experience with them and it's worked for you and any kind of dredge, then of course feel free to use that. All right, guys. Somebody is joining us at 2 a.m. That, that must be India time. Okay. Um, right. Yeah, nine hours away. Yeah, it's probably India time right now. Okay, so we got some chicken in there frying. Let me get actually one more little piece in there. And you're trying okay. to not crowd the pan. Yeah, trying to not crowd it. And you don't want the, this thing going. I'm going to put this aside for a second over here. And let's work on our tarka. So I've got another pan of oil over here. 
Um, let's get this thing going hot. And while that heats up, let's go ahead and get some of our stuff prepped over here. Ah! Got a little 65 batter on the chili pepper, haven't we? Yeah. Okay. Oh, Nilesh. Nilesh! Nilesh! Hi. Nilesh Patel from, from Surat. Nilesh was our absolutely, incredibly fantastic host in Surat. Thank and you, Vish, for catching that. Chef. I missed him. Wonderful gentleman. And just give us just the most amazing time. What an honor that he's joining us at 2 o'clock in the morning. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and slice it up the little wings. This is going to be for our tarka while the oil's heating up. Some fried chili. So as you guys noticed, what I did was I sort of rolled the jalapeno. First, cut the end off, and I was able to tap the seeds out very easily because I don't want little weird bits of seeds in here. Oh, we can get this out of the way. See as we go. Boom. Okay, one down today. Oh, that's where they get chicken 65 batter all over the floor. All right, and then let's It was get... just too clean, so you had to mess, mess things up. up a little. Um, where's my... Let's see how these bad boys are done. Oh, yes! Yeah. They're turning crispy little nuggets. You can see, and we've got that reddish color without having to put the, you know, the bright red dye on it. Um, I'm so amazed this person can't find curry leaves in California. That's surprising. Are you trying the Indian markets? Oh yeah, she's saying okay. Indian markets. So what we want to do here is sort of cut these into batons. So I'm going to cut the bottom off over here and then cut these into tennis strips like this, right? And then each strip you can then cut into that and you made yourself like a little matchstick um, julienne. And that's what we're going to do with the rest of these bad boys. Maybe some of you guys on here who have good resources for how to find curry leaves for people that can't find it at their local Indian markets. You can chime in for that person on there that was looking for them. All right. We that's grow right. ours in a pot. That's what this one came from. We yeah. grow it in yeah, a yeah. pot thank outside. You. Thank you again to Tall Man Tutor, my good friend Verghese. All right, guys. Let's pull this Chicken 65 out. Put it on the plate. Put the little napkin. Soak up the oil. And we're going to get the tarka going in the meantime. And there we go. Yep, that oil dropped right down to about 350, exactly where we wanted it. That piece can use a little extra time. I know, Vish. Atlanta has the <clears throat> Atlanta has the like endless sourcing of curry leaves. Okay, so this oil I'm looking waiting for it to shimmer. This is the oil I'm going to be cooking the. Um, would you, you want me to swap them out, honey? Move it over yeah. so you can see it better. Okay, why don't I do that? That one's too blocked. This one here, over there. Let's move the sixty five here. Let's look at this move chicken that just came out. Mm -mm -mm. Nice and crispy mm, looking. Nice and crispy looking. That's. Perfect 65. It's reddish in color, brownish red without being that bright red. Sorry, folks, if you really think that chicken 65 ought to be fluorescent red, glow in the dark, I can't help you today. You gotta use food coloring for that. Got it. All right, so first I'm gonna put now. Or beet usually, juice, according to Vish. Usually I get my oil from a tarka ripping hot if I'm doing mustard seeds. And the reason I do it ripping hot because I want the mustard seeds to pop. As you saw last time, they actually popped a little. Everywhere! Everywhere they got a little too hot. But generally speaking, uh, whereas we're doing for, uh, tarka with these other stuff, I don't need to get it quite as hot because I'm actually doing an infusion of the flavors. You still want them to fry a little bit, obviously, but you don't need them to get, you know, completely hot. So in with my, and there, it's hot enough. You can see there's trying to sizzle in there. In with that. And in with the ginger. Next. And that ginger flavor in the oil, mm, 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 mm. It's going to be so good. How much oil is in there? Um, It's about a, probably a half a cup of oil. I mean, you know, it just... I mean, I, I put a little more in there because I'm obviously doing a demo. I mean, you could do it with just literally a, a half a cup of oil and um, and just do it sort of an infusion. You're not doing a deep fry. Um, all right, let me get this guy out of here. It's almost done too. Okay, and give the ginger a few seconds to fry and get the nice flavor. And look at how the um, uh, chili peppers are blistering. 
Uh, and it's releasing a lot of that flavor into the oil to make the oil nice and smoky. Let's get our chili rings in there too. Happy Handful Independence Day! Happy Independence, Independence Day. Day! That's right, of course! Freedom at midnight! What are you doing cleaning the floor down there? Because, you know, you gotta clean as you go. You're on camera, honey. You gotta I stay know. up here with us. And the last thing I gotta do is put in my curry leaves. And I'm gonna strip these off. And if you don't have fresh curry leaves, use dried curry leaves. If you don't have dried curry leaves, don't worry about it. Do what you can. Okay. So while that's sizzling, I'm gonna move this back over here and do one more back to 65. And then we'll play in the floor. This is just gonna sit here and soak. And just sit there and, yeah, soak. I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit. Do want it to obviously. Oh my goodness, that burn. smells amazing. Can you smell it? Isn't yeah. that that's the curry leaves? The curry leaves oil and then, oh, that hit the oil. And actually, here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to put in just a hint, just a hint, just a hint. <laughs> you guys, did I make myself clear? Very clear. <laughs> just a hint of turmeric in here, too. Like a quarter of a quarter teaspoon, half quarter of a uh, quarter teaspoon. Um, flavor that oil and a pinch of salt in the oil too, because when we drizzle the oil above it, that way we don't have to salt the chicken separately. And that all just goes in there. Um, give that a little stirry poo of this. Yes, that is gonna be absolutely fantastic. Um, well, I could make more chicken 65, but we're almost out of time, so why don't we just play that? I'm gonna turn this off. Play some musical, musical pans, hot oil pans. And um, you're bringing this oil back up onto a flame. Yeah, I'm just bringing it back. To, I'm just bringing it back to sizzle. And um, while we're doing that, let's check and make sure that this thing is cooked through and through. There's no reason it shouldn't be. Oh yeah, perfectly down on the inside. Oh, mmm, mmm. <laughs> and it doesn't even hit the so oil. So excited! Yet. I'm gonna eat this one. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Um. Let's see. We're gonna have a snacky dinner tonight, if you didn't already guess. That is so dang good. All right, guys. Mmm, mmm, mmm. One more little. And a lot of that black pepper just coming through. Mm. Where can people find the recipe? It will be posted online at spicewaterbrand.com. Go to recipes. And we usually get it up in about 24 to 48 hours. So what's today? By Tuesday, guaranteed to be on there. The only reason it takes as long as it does is when the team over at Spicewala has to helm be all weekend to actually sit down and type this up and send it there. But hopefully you're able to follow along. And hopefully this is a very easy, easy recipe to follow. So, we're gonna make a nest, a nest of cilantro. Speaking of nests, um, Vish missed the part where you said this was like, saying goodbye to the fro. This is Vish. This is the final episode of The Shaggy Chef on Monday. Not live. Not in real time. Because I'm a chicken. I will be getting a haircut. Oh my God, it's so good. The mm. cooking show is continuing, by the way, just to clarify. But he just won't be shaggy really anymore. At least not as shaggy. All right. So let's take some of these fried little bits over here and a little bit of that oil, and drizzle some of that oil over. Oh, yummy. And then drizzle some of these little fried bits on top. And, I mean, hey, nobody said the street food was supposed to be light light and healthy. I mean, these are fun, fun, fun Sunday, Saturday afternoon snacks. Maybe another couple of little chili peppers over there. I would hit this with some onions. You want a little extra lime juice, a little lime on the side. And if you really like some heat, you can always add a little extra chili. Or if not, um, some sliced green chilies. But the fried chilies on here will have that chili flavor without it being too, um, without it being too uh, spicy. All right, guys, there you have it. Chicken 65, made at home. Now you guys can go and make one of the most iconic Indian dishes that everybody's legendary yourselves at home. No uh, trip to India with a 43-page menu required. Um, and if you, once you've tried this, you'll never again want to have a chick fried chicken tender 
from Bojangles or Chick-fil-A or any other places if you can make this yourself at home. So easy to That's do. That's for if sure. If you guys need the spices, just stock up. Uh, I know I sound like a shameless pitch man for Spice Wallow, but I cannot impress upon everybody enough the incredible world of cuisine that opens up with a well-stocked pantry of spices. I mean, so you have a hundred spices in your pantry. What's the big deal? That basically means you have spices from all over the world. Middle Eastern spices, North African spices, Asian spices, Indian spices, European herbs and seasonings. Keep it all, because that is how you can transform a humble cut of meat, a little piece of chicken, broccoli, vegetables, anything, into pretty much anything your heart desires. You can travel around the world with the pantry stock with the right kind of spices. I mean, beans are beans are beans, and the difference between transforming those beans or those lentils from North African cuisine to Indian cuisine to, you know, Middle Eastern cuisine is going to boil down to the spices. So uh, I know everybody watching the show says, well, Marilyn's got a pantry full of spices, so this is easy for him. Well, go get yourself your own pantry full of spices. They're three, four, five dollars for a tin. Get a hundred of them. Make room in your kitchen somewhere. It'll transform the way you cook. It'll transform the way you think. It'll transform the way you eat. And besides, it's delicious. So, and if you need help with any of this, go to spicewallow.com. We've got 147 spices from A to Z, as well as blends from all around the world. And I know I sound like a pitch man. I don't care if you go to Spice Wallow. Go to your grocery store and start finding that chaat masala, that ajwain, that, um, you know, harissa, that berberry, that ras al hanout. Just find spices and start using them. Start watching these videos. Start learning how to use them. And just, you know, become a better, become a better at-home cook. That's all the series about. All right, enough preaching. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. Next time I see you, it'll be a new me, slimmer, more handsome, <laughs> less hair. All in one shaggy. week. Huh? In one week. Just watch the transformation. Oh, wow. All because of the magic of a hot cup of chai. <laughs> a beautiful chai pani mom behind the wheel. Oh, cheers, everybody. And some chicken 65. Cheers, everybody. See you next time. Vish, good to see you. Nilesh, thank you for joining from India. Honored. Uh, everybody else watching, love you guys. See you next week. Bye. Bye, everybody.